Hello artists and crafters. Today I'm going to be making a feather using this mold. Now I've created several other ones of various colors and these will be used for a wind chime that I'm creating. Um, slightly rustic, uh, it's going to be using a branch, but obviously these aren't rustic looking, so <laughs> this is just to add some really pretty colors and so that they just flow in the wind. So today what we're going to do is, I'm just going to make a couple of them. Um, I'll show you how to make one and I'm pretty sure with all the ones I already have, I have enough to make the wind chime. So, I will show you how first to make the feather and then after I will show you how to do the wind chime. Alright, well first you're going to need some UV resin and a little mixing bowl. I already had put some resin in there. I'll probably need a little bit more. So I'll just add a little touch more. And then I'm going to start with the white glitter and I'm just going to add some glitter into this. Not too much, just, just enough to color it. And then with the mixing tool, I'll just mix it on up. And as you can see, you can see some glittery. parts in there. Then next we're just going to pour it in. Now we'll probably have to mix up another one because this does take quite a bit. And just spread it out. And you have to make sure that you get it right up into this little part here and it does look like we're going to need another little batch of it so just add some more a little more glitter We'll pour it in. And then make sure you get it all the leftovers out of the mixing bowl as best as you can. Try not to waste your resin. And I'm just making sure it's all the way to the edges. And it's actually a nice thin layer. Okay, and now we will cure that for about, I'd say, three minutes. Now that it's done curing, uh, what I didn't show you is I did a, another layer over the glitter layer with just clear resin. So now we can remove it. And there you have it. And then the next step we're going to be doing 
is we're going to start drilling holes in these so that we can hang them. Now I'm just going to be using a Dremel. You can use a drill and it's just a small bit that makes a little small hole and then decide which way you want them to hang to. Uh, I believe this way is good and then just carefully start making the hole at an angle and then once you get it in there you just drill all the way through. Now it may take a little bit There we go, and it's stuck. <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. And just take one, and then just start at an angle, making the hole. And then it will drill through and then you just work it out. Now if you do accidentally scratch it you can just take, I think I scratched this one, this little scratch there, you could just take a little resin and put it in there and cure it for like 30 seconds and that should look good again. <laughs> and let's do another one. This one's a little thicker, so this might take a little more to get through. When they're thinner, they're easier to get through. There we go. And it's that simple. Sometimes it'll get stuck, sometimes it won't. Um, so I'll just get finished up with these and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, to go along with the feathers, I thought that I would also like some beads. So I showed you these before and I've made beads out of these and then I purchased this one and this one already has a hole so I don't have to drill so I'm going to be using this and I'll probably be using this shape right here this teardrop shape and make some of these also and they'll hang in between the feathers so I'm going to use the same um, glitter that I used for the feathers and I'm just going to make beads out of them. Uh, so let's get started. So to make the beads and these you'll need your UV resin, stirring and a little spoon, you'll need some utensils and some mixing bowls. And don't forget about all the glitters. Okay, let's get started. And I'm just putting enough in there to make a few beads. And don't put a lot of glitter in, just, just a little bit. I could have used a spoon. I did not. <laughs> That's perfectly okay. And then, let's see. We'll mix it up. Okay. 
and then pour it into a couple of these. And then if you need to get some off, just wipe it with that as the edge and then a baby wipe. Or you could use a brush. That should get it all off nice and easy. probably have to mix up some more because I don't I believe there's not enough I'm just so just put some more in Mix it well and then just pour it in. Oops, so we got a bubble in there. So what happened there was there's a little bubble and it prevented the, the UV resin to go in. So just be careful when you're putting it in, just do it slowly. And then if you have ex excess, just wipe it up. So we did four of those. Um, let's see. And then we can do a little bit more. into one of these. So now we will put them under the UV lamp. I 
and I'm going to put them for about three minutes. And we'll be right back. Okay, I did the front and the back just to make sure that um, it was cured all the way through. And then we can take the beads out. Ooh. Now you might, oops, after it speeds away. Now you might have to file this down a little bit. That looks good. Slippery. And then you might just have to just file this down. Or you can clip the little pieces that are hanging over. Let's see this one. Oh, this is pretty. So I'm going to continue to make these in different colors. And then I'll come back and show you how to put the wind chime together. All right, let's get started at putting this together. Um, so you've made all your little feathers or, you know, whatever object you wanted to make. So you have several of those. I have nine. Um, I also have some beads that I did of the same colors. This is, um, you know, just a piece of branch from one of my trees that I took the bark off of and it's well dried. Um, you can also use driftwood for this. It's a good idea. You'll need some fishing line. I chose the 50 pound and you'll need some little eyelets just a little screw in eyelets scissors of course um now you'll also need some kind of rope to tie this up with um i'm i'm not sure if i'm going to be using the fish line but i believe I might be using some kind of like a nautical rope on there to make it a little more rustic looking. Um, even though these aren't rustic looking, but so put them in the order first that you would like them in, that you would like them hanging. And then, uh, don't take the round beads, but like, I mean, if you do it all in round, round beads, that's fine. I have these like little teardrop shapes. That I'm going to place at the end. So I'm just going to find areas for each one so that they don't, um, they aren't right next to the same color that I had made. So let's see what we got going here. And this one. Just to get an idea of where I'd like to place them. And on occasion, you know, the little beads will get away. Hmm, maybe this one here. Um, this one's silver, so hmm, maybe possibly like this. Um, uh, missing one. And then I have a gold one That's over here. And let's see. I think that looks pretty good. Oops, I think I might be missing one of them. Oh, of course I am. And then I have a blue one, which can't go next to the blue, so we're gonna have to switch something up here. I'll put this here. Um, hmm. This, no, can't do that. Oh. Kind of got two pinks that are very close in color. So we're going to have to switch that up. How about like this? Put the darker one there. 
and this right here. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're going to choose how you want this to hang. I'm thinking like, so this part hangs down. And then, now you can just tie this right to this, just wrap it around a couple times and make a tight knot. Um, let's see if I can get these open. I'm going to use these and then just see, screw them in. Like so. And I'm going to try to make um, even, try to make even uh, separations between, oops, between each one. Hmm. Now, if they're not going in a straight line, that's okay, because obviously, as long as they're hanging underneath, we're good. Sometimes they're hard to get in. This is a very hard wood, so. Okay, so I'm gonna get the rest of these in and then I will come right back and show you what I have done. Okay, once you got all the little eyelet screws in. Um, I have them spaced pretty equal. And I made sure, you know, every time I checked to put one in, I hung it the way it's going to be hanging by either the rope or the um, fishing line. So next, we can start stringing up everything. So you're going to have to decide like about how far you want it to hang. I'm not going to have it hang any farther than this. So basically this is, you know, perfect. So we'll have to cut some of the fish line. So what I'm doing is I'm alternating one higher, one lower. They're going to be all different heights anyways, because this is going up and down. But what I did was, um, the first one I did was 20 inches long. And don't forget, when you tie it off too, it's going to take up eh, maybe about an inch and a half or so, maybe a little bit more. And then the second one, I did it 25 inches. Then went to the next one, 20. So I'm going to alternate it. So I'm going to have 20 inches, 25 inches, 20 inches, 25 inches. And this is for the feathers. Um, the beads will all be one length and they're going to be in the center of these feathers. So I'm going to continue on and then when I come back I will show you the finished product. Well not finished but close to it <laughs> um, as far as the feathers is going to be finished. So I'll be right back in a second. Okay so just check it to see if they're hanging. I know you can't see the whole thing, but they're tied to each little eyelet. And I did the variations of sizes. So it's 20, 25, 20, 25. And remember the feathers go every other eyelet screw. So, 
Next, what we're going to have to do, um, even though I have these laid out, I'm just going to set these aside and then I'll figure them out again afterwards which colors we're going to be using. You're going to be needing some kind of glue. Um, you could use nail polish, clear nail polish on it because you don't want the, the fishing line to come apart. It doesn't stay together in a knot very well, even with using the pliers to tighten it. So I'm going to use E6000. So the next step, get some of the stuff out of the way, will be adding a jump ring to each one of these so we can tie the um, fishing line on. This just enables the um, the bead to hang straight because when you do just the fishing line it kind of hangs a weird way so I thought well let's just try some jump rings you can do whatever you want with this you can use whatever type of beads you can use jump rings um, instead of using fishing line you can use you know some kind of cord or string um, even like the jute string you could use that you can also use that to hang your um, well I guess it would be either a wind chime or a sun catcher so whatever you want it to be <laughs> um, I believe I'm just gonna hang this in my window because I think that'll look really pretty just looking at all the the shimmering colors and everything I don't know if you can see this what I'm doing but I'm just taking a jump ring and I'm opening it to the side so it doesn't damage the circle taking a bead placing the bead on it and then closing it up If you're not sure how to do that, um, in some of my other videos, I do show how to put jump rings on. So, just close that up. So, okay, so those are all ready. Um, next, we are going to be putting on, let's see, let me just check this. We can just slide this probably right through, just make like a knot, slide this through, slide, slide, make a knot, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm having problems today, make a knot with the fishing line, slide this through and then make a knot on the other side, or you can just do one knot and then it'll just stay hanging down. So, um, next we're going to measure out approximately twenty five inches of fishing line. And then we can take one of these and tie a knot. And again, remember you can use um, some nail polish, some clear nail polish to secure your knot. It's not doing some weird stuff there. Okay. It's still kind of hanging a little weird because it's, it's coiling up, but that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll make a knot. Um, 
that's about, let me see, about two and a half inches. Then you can add a bead. Now if you want, you can do another knot here, but you really don't have to. So we'll do another knot about two and a half inches. You can slide back and forth. It's not gonna hurt anything because it's going to be secure. Okay, so I made another knot. And remember we made four beads for it, so there's four beads each. Make another knot. You can just kind of, you know, estimate the two and a half inches. You don't have to measure it out every time. And just find that hole, put that through, and then about two inches, two and a half inches, about. I'm trying to get the wire through. And then you can put the last bead on. And that's the way it looks. And let's see, we can't put it near. I should have planned this out for these, but I'm just going to place it between these two dark ones. So I'm just going to put that this out of the way. Got a lot of stuff going on here. Need a bigger table. And I'm just going to tie a knot. Secure it. Okay. And then I don't know if you can see it. And then I'll do another color. So you're going to need another 25 inches for that. I'm trying to show you the best way possible to do it, but I'm sure, you know, whatever you do, whatever you use for this, will work out just fine. I'm having, you know, a little bit of difficulty. I probably could have gotten a thinner pound um, of um, the fish fishing line. I'm not exactly sure what um, what 50 pounds is. I know it's thicker and I know it's for bigger fish. But <laughs> you could get a thinner one too. That's totally okay. Sometimes I just can't find those little holes. Now if it's not exactly two and a half inches, that's fine. I mean, if you want to have it exact, you can. I'm just making the knots and putting my beads on. I mean, they have to be somewhat close in... Um, you know, to the two and a half. They don't have to be exact though. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to measure it all out. And I can't find the hole. Oh, there it is. I mean, I hope everything's on the camera because I'm using a different setup for this. And obviously you could tell I'm using a different table so I can spread out a little bit. Okay, put that on. And I will put it right between here, between these two. Let's make sure that's not caught up there. There's, there's so many 
lines here. It's like very confusing, but if you have a big enough table, uh, kitchen table or whatever, it's probably better to use that to tie these up just so that you, you know, you can get them all on. Okay, that's another one. All right, so I'm going to finish these up and I'll be right back. Okay, now that it's all done, everything's tied on, everything's secure, um, I just have to go back in and just do all the knots with some glue. But you saw how I did that before. And as you can see, like any wind chime, sun catcher, they get all tangled up. And this one's really <laughs> tangled up. I'll get it straightened out and hang it. I'll show you how to make, there we go. I don't know how much you can see. It's really pretty and it'll look really nice hanging either outside or from a window. I will show you next how to put on something to hang it up either in your window or outside and I'll be right back all right the final step after you've placed all your little pieces on and secured every little knot with glue um, there was one step I did which you don't have to do, but I used Mod Podge on the wood and it gave it a nice like satin sheen to it. Now I'm hanging mine indoors in a window. Um, outside, I do believe Mod Podge would work well because I've done uh, some other little crafts and I have them hanging outside at this minute and they've been through probably about four seasons and none of the Mod Podge is um, bad. It looks really good and it held up really well. So the next step would be to measure out your rope or twine or whatever you're using to hang it. I'm using a thinner nautical rope and I'm going to use hot glue to adhere it. I already measured it out, so depending on where you're hanging it, measure your rope or string um, to wherever you're hanging it. Um, I needed less because I want it higher up in the window. Um, if you're having it hanging from a tree or um, some kind of plant hanger, I would say probably do a little bit more. I would say I have approximately... Hmm, maybe three feet which is not a lot but you might need a little more if you want it you know hanging um you know a little lower so what we're going to do is take an end make sure everything's kind of out of the way and we're just going to glue it on and wrap it three times to make it secure and what you're going to want to do is also make sure that the rope, see the little eyelets here? I'm trying to show you and I'm sticking my thumb in the way. The little eyelets, so those are on the bottom. So you'd want your rope or twine up towards the top. Um, if it's something that's thinner, like a jute, you could wrap it around and just tie it in a knot. And then, like I said, secure it with a little bit of glue. Um, you could also put glue in that area, hot glue, and then wrap it and then tie a knot and then just put just a little bit of hot glue on the knot if you're using jute. Uh, this would be kind of hard to, this would make a very big knot, so I'm <laughs> not, not gonna do a big knot. So we're just going to it's very hard working in my little teeny space, but let's see. I have a little glob of glue on there and I'm trying to get off. So I think right about 
here I'm going to start just get some hot glue on there and then hold this on now be careful because it is very hot and then I'm also on the on these ends here I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue so it doesn't unravel okay and then we're just going to make our way around need some more glue there we go and we're just going to keep rotating it until we make three wraps and then I'll show you when I'm done all right so on this side I'm going to start gluing I just double checked it on the uh, window that I'm hanging it in now um, I just want to let you know that um, while gluing I did have a little bit of difficulty with the other side because I was doing it left-handed I'm not left-handed so I was having a really hard time doing this you know just be patient as you're doing it oops sorry And I obviously do not have the best glue gun. Got a little glue on me, which hurt. just take this piece down to the bottom and then cut it and then we'll secure the end and just hold it I'm sorry if I keep going out of frame it's a little hard to manage so I'll show you the other end so what I did with this end was I just tucked I glued the edges and just tucked it underneath and then this ended at the upper part and then I will take a picture of it hung up and then sh show you when it's done thank you for watching my video if you liked it please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and press that bell for any further notifications of upcoming videos I'll see you soon bye bye